In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a face tracked camera movement effect inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's get into it. Now there's two ways of doing this effect. You've got the first more simple option, or you've got the second option, which is a little bit more complicated, but looks a little better in my opinion. So let me show you the first option first. So we're just going to go into layer one. We'll go into transform. And as you can see, we've got position, scale, rotation, everything here. Now we just need a visual marker for ourselves. So I'm just going to go into layer new solid. Um, we'll just make this red, just press OK. Then I'm just going to turn the eyeball off just to turn that layer off for now. And then I'm just going to create an ellipse mask around my face. So this is roughly where I want my face to be at all times. So I'm just going to turn that back on, press T to load opacity. We'll pull this down. There we go. So I'll pull the opacity down to somewhere around 40, 40% maybe. And then we'll just lock that layer. So this is where I should be roughly having my face at all times, regardless of where I move. So now you just want to go through and create a new keyframe on position and rotation. Then I'm just going to go forward in space and I'm just going to move the position. The rotation's moving a little bit, so I'm just going to rotate around. As you can see, the rotation tool is W if that helps. So V is the normal cursor to move the position and then W is rotation. So we're just going to go through and move the position and the rotation around. And there you go, you just keep working through this process, but we've got up to the five second mark now, and let's just see what we have so far. So as you can see, that is working, that does what it needs to do. So I'm just gonna turn off that reference layer just to help us visually mark this up, and we'll play this back. There you go, that looks really cool, although at the moment we're seeing a lot of the edges. So in order to get rid of that, I'm just gonna go into effects and presets and search for motion tile. We'll drop motion tile onto this video and I'm just going to change the output width to 300, the output height to 300, and then we'll select mirror edges. And as you can see, that's just going to fill in those edges with a reflection of that video. Of course, as well, feel free to increase the scale if that makes life a little bit easier for you. Or alternatively, you can go layer new null objects. We'll parent both of those layers to the null object. So highlight both of those layers and parent them to the null. And then you can just increase the scale and the position on the null without affecting anything. Now, adding the motion tile effect on does take a lot more work for the computer. So I'm going to drop the quality down to a third just so we can render this out. And as you can see, that is doing what it needs to do. That is the head tracked effect now in place. But the problem is it just looks a little bit imperfect. It's a bit all over the place. And that's because we were just doing it by hand. Just before we carry on with this video, I'm going to take a quick break to talk about my Skillshare courses. If you're enjoying these YouTube videos, but you would prefer more long form content, then my Skillshare courses are perfect for you. I have a two hour plus course all about Adobe After Effects, and it teaches you everything you need to know to get started and to get familiar with the interface and how After Effects works. So if you're interested and you want to learn more, then please feel free to check the link in the description below. Now back to the video. So instead of doing that option, we're going to go for the other option, which is to use the motion tracker inside of Adobe After Effects to stabilize the footage. And there we go. So from here, we're just going to go into window and we'll make sure tracker is enabled. So make sure there is a tick there. Then we'll just go over to the right of After Effects. And as you can see, tracker is there. So we don't want to track the camera. We don't want to track the warp stabilizer. We want to track the motion. So the motion is coming from myself and that's what I want to track. So we'll track motion and make sure position and rotation are both ticked. Now we're just going to go back to composition and pull the quality up to full just because this does a lot better at reading the scene when it's full. Then we'll just move that first point over one eye. So I'm just going to use this light here as a reference. Then I'm just going to move tracking point two over to the other eye. So as you can see, we've got two tracking points over two different eyes. And then from here, you just want to press play or analyze forward. And as you can see at this moment in time, that has drifted away because there is motion blur in the frame. 
So feel free to nudge these over. Make sure these are where they should be belonging. So if I go back a little bit, you can see those are following the movements. But when there's more motion blur, it's having a hard time. So just go through frame by frame and just make sure that these tracking points are exactly where they need to be. A great way of avoiding this problem, by the way, is to shoot in a higher shutter speed because if you have a higher shutter speed in your camera, then that means there's going to be less motion blur and that means After Effects won't struggle as much. You can see over here when there was no motion blur, After Effects read it very quickly and knew exactly where the points were. But the moment there was motion blur introduced into the shot, you can see After Effects is having a hard time figuring out where it needs to go. So this means if you have got motion blur in the shot, you're just going to have to go through frame by frame and just move these over to follow that movement. Now I'm just gonna leave it there for now. I've only done the first one second, but as you can see, those tracking points are exactly where they need to go. So from here, I'm just gonna go edit target. And as you can see, we can't select anything. And that is because we need to create a new null object. So we'll go layer, new, null object. We'll edit target, and this can be the null object. Then from there, we'll just go down to apply. We'll go X and Y dimensions. And that has been applied on to the null object. So now that we've completed the track and added that to the null object, you can see you've got all of this tracking data applied to that null object. As you can see, that is following our eyes perfectly. But how do we get this onto our footage? Well, first things first, we want to open up the footage and the null object in transform. And then we just want to go ahead and adjust the anchor point. So at the moment, the anchor point is in the middle, but we want this to be roughly up by the eyes. So I'm just going to drag this up until that's roughly in between my eyes there. And then I'm just going to move the position around to counteract that. So the footage is now back in the middle and the anchor point is in the middle of my eyes. Now from here, we want to parent the anchor point on the footage to the position keyframes on the null object. And in order to do that, we're just going to drag this parent and pit whip tool, drag that onto position. And now the anchor point is linked to the position on the null object. And when we play this back, you can see we're instantly getting that really nice movement. Now, even though this looks great, we are starting to see the edges of the frame. So this is where we need to either increase the scale to get rid of that or alternatively we can add our motion tile effect back on so we can go into effects and add it that way or you can just steal it from the previous example so we'll copy this motion tile we'll paste this onto this layer and as you can see all of those edges have been filled and now you can see we've got this really awesome effect so all we need to do to finish this off is just apply the motion blur to both layers make sure the motion blur icon is blue so make sure that is enabled and you'll get this really awesome head tracked camera movement effect inside of Adobe After Effects. But there you go. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.